Hi, welcome. If you're new, my name is Sarah, and I have kids in 7th, 5th, 3rd, and 1st grade, and then I also have a toddler in the house. Uh, so I'm just going to share with you what we are doing for our 2022-2023 curriculum this year. I did not share what we did last year. At the end of last year, I very much so debated if I should do an end of year what we use for curriculum, and it just didn't work out. So I'm going to share this year, and I will probably interject some of what we also did last year because some things changed last year, and so it's affected this year. So I'll probably talk a little bit about that. Um, while I'm showing you this year's curriculum. Also, if you aren't familiar with me, we um, partner with a public charter school. So we get support from the charter school and um, we're accountable to the charter school. We meet with a um, credentialed teacher six times every single year. We have to show them a certain amount of paperwork. We turn in paperwork um, to show the work we're doing at home. Um, so that'll come into play as I'm explaining a few things to you as well um, that uh, we have certain things we have to do. We are slowly <laughs> integrating more than just like the four core subjects that are, we're required to do, um, at least here in California, and that is history, science, math, and language arts. Um, we really scaled back once our fifth child was born. I just couldn't handle any more than just getting those four subjects done. That was all that was required by us by our charter school. So that's all I did. Things are finally feeling a little bit better um, now that my baby is two and a half. Um, she will color next to us uh, at the table or, you know, or near us, as well as still get into everything she's not supposed to get into and make a mess all over my house while we're trying to get school done. However, <laughs> It's a big improvement because this year we're actually able to school during the morning hours, whereas last year I had to school only in the afternoon pretty much while she was napping. And that was pretty challenging to get anything else done during the day because um, I would help my kids with their independent work in the morning and then have to do group studies plus um, language arts with them in the afternoon and try to squeeze that in before dinner, before she woke up, and then it was nighttime dinner routine things. So. It's definitely better this year so far. For the most part, we get things done before lunch or we just have a late lunch to squeeze it in and get it done before lunch. And then the afternoon is more free, especially while she's napping, which she's doing right now. So that's been a really big change. So I'm slowly going to try, we haven't started yet, um, incorporating a few more things um, for the kids and I'll show you what those are. But to be totally honest, I am not that homeschool mom. I've realized that does all the things. I actually like it being a little bit on the bearer side um, and not doing, I mean, I love seeing from other people all the extra things they do, the nature walks, the poetry tea times, um, even extensive morning baskets. But I have come to realize and learn about myself now that I think we're in our ninth year of homeschooling, uh, that that's just not me and that's okay. And I'm okay with that. And it's not my kids really either. I'm sure they would enjoy some of that extra stuff, but they also just really enjoy having their time to play and do whatever they want to do with their free time. And so I'm, why not? <laughs> well, that's what we're going to do if that's, if that's what works for all of us in our family. Okay. So let me show you everything. I'm going to go over group studies, which are history and science. And um, all four of my kids are participating in that together which is new this year. And then uh, I'll show you individual stuff. And I am sweating bullets right now, guys, because it is like a million degrees in here. It is so stinking hot. So um, excuse, excuse the drippage that you may see. All right, let me show you. Okay, here is just a little overview of most of what we're using, the main parts at least. So we'll break it down bit by bit. For history this year, we are continuing with the good and the beautiful. We are now on year four. They discontinued this. I bought it in time before they discontinued it. So it's a part of the original or set at least that I have. I don't know what they're coming out with next, how it's gonna change. The binding on this changed. It used to be something different and I would bind it myself. I can't remember how it used to be, but this is different for this year. Um, and then, so it comes with the course book. It comes with this book with maps and images. 
Um, so you get reference to this throughout the course. Um, there's audio recordings that you also listen to. It came with this history houses. It's kind of like a review. We haven't really played it yet, but it has a review of all four years of history in it. And it's so far, it seems like it's going to be a fun one to play. And they direct you in here when to play it. But I mean, you could play it anytime as well. Um, so for this course, and if you're not familiar with the good and the beautiful, you go over four different time periods throughout history every single year, and you touch on different sections of that time period, if that makes sense. So in this one, we're doing ancient Rome last year. We did last year. I can't remember what we did, <laughs> um, but we've done like ancient Egypt, um, ancient Mesopotamia, which I actually think is what we did last year. Ancient Greece. We've done um, ancient, they call it ancient Asia, like China, um, and then also like Bible times. So that's what we've done also. So ancient Rome and we're enjoying this so far. And with this unit, they recommend this read aloud and we actually are really enjoying this one as well. We are almost all the way through it. Um, and this has been a pleasant one. All the read alouds for last year, I want to say that we did, we also enjoyed. And all the ones for last year, you could find as audiobooks as well. I believe all four of them were available as audiobooks. I couldn't find any of these ones this year as audiobooks. Then we're going to go into the Reformation, History of the Bible. And with that, we're going to be reading Ink on His Fingers. I don't know anything about this. Uh, then we're going to be reading about slavery in the Civil War era. And with that one, we're going to be reading Escape to Freedom. Also don't know anything about this. And all of these I picked up from the Good and the Beautiful's website. And then our last unit will be about the Civil Rights Movement and post-World War II history. Last year we learned about World War II. I think the year before that we has touched on World War I. But we did a lot of World War II last year. And that was really interesting. And then we have this book, Rocket Genius, to go along with that. So that is what we're working through. Um, and we're still, I'm still really enjoying it. And I think the kids do get quite a bit out of it and hopefully enjoy it as well. I think they do really enjoy the re read alouds um, more than anything. They also just like being read to because then they can draw or do little like crafty things with their hands while they're listening to me. So that's always a good time for them. So for last year, we did four unit studies and they were, we started with arthropods, which I actually enjoyed a lot more. And I think my kids did too, than I was anticipating because it's all insects and things. Um, so that was actually a good unit. Then we went into meteorology, which was good. It was just, it was long. It was 20 lessons, which is one of their longer lengths of units um, for all their science units that they have out. They only have a few, I think, I think marine biology is another one that has a lot of lessons, like somewhere between 15 and 20. Um, the rest of them are typically, I think, under 15 lessons, more between 10 to 15 lessons. So it was longer. And part of it that we, I tried, I tried to um, keep up on was we were supposed to like keep track of our weather um, every day for like, I think like it was supposed to be like for two weeks. And then you would make a chart at the end. So you would go outside, you would um, have a barometer to check um, pressure. Uh, you check wind speed, wind direction, the temperature. Um, you look for rainfall, which I was hoping, I purposely did the meteorology in it over the end of fall into winter um, because that was like our chance to possibly have rainfall. Uh, but being in Southern California and being in a drought, it did not really happen. There were a couple of times, and I can't even remember if it was during the unit, but we just kept our little rain catcher out. We still have it out. Uh, and uh, we did have rainfall a couple times, so we actually got to go and measure it and be like, ah, oh, it actually worked. <laughs> um, but while we were doing the unit, I don't know that we ever had any rain collected in it. And <laughs> the temperature pretty much stayed the same. And... Uh, everything pretty much stayed the same. It was very mild, even in our winter. So um, that in a way kind of fell by the wayside, because it was just like same old, same old. And it was, it was extra effort to get outside and go take those measurements. But otherwise, it was a pretty good unit. 
And then after that, we did a unit on geology, which I we really enjoyed. We really liked learning about the earth and um, you learn about tectonic plates and the movement and how things are formed and different types. And then you got little samples of different types of, I'm just gonna call them rocks, just different specimens. And um, we all really and actually enjoyed that unit. And then we rounded out the year with a unit on mammals, another unit that we actually really, really enjoyed. So overall, we had a really good, I think, um, year with science. So uh, it was fun and I'm glad we did all of those. Um, yeah, and I would pretty much, I think, recommend all of them, I think. And the neat thing is that we ended with mammals and we are starting this year with ecosystems. And so it kind of plays in uh, learning about a group of animals, I guess, um, a species, well, multiple species, um, but then learning how things are all interconnected through ecosystems. So it kind of flowed into this year, which was a nice little segue for us, I think. So like I just said, we're doing ecosystems first this year, and this has been pretty good. We are only, um, I think we just finished lesson four today, and there's, I don't even know, nine lessons in this one. So you talk about a variety of things. They do come with um, grade seven through eight lesson extensions, which we are utilizing for my seventh grader. Um, so that's how I'm able to do it with all the kids. Uh, my son, who is in first grade, partly participates in this with us. Um, this is more of a, like getting his toes wet by doing uh, group work with us because it's not something he's ever done before. But also through the charter school that we do, my kids go one day a week to them. And he has like a more of a traditional school there, a first grade class. And so he actually gets history and science taught to him for the all the lessons that if we were doing the school's curriculum, they teach all of those lessons for the entire week in that one day that he's there attending class. So there's only a handful of, of times that he is not going to that class because of holidays or what, you know, teacher trainings or whatever it might be, um, that he's home with us, um, you know, that day and did not get his history and science taught to him at the school. And so that's more of those weeks. I try to make sure that he is participating with us here. Um, otherwise, it's uh, if he's there and hears it, great. If not, and he's like playing with the toddler, also great. So that's kind of how that is working out. Um, I'll just give you a little quick look-see, just so you can see uh, a little bit of how it is. I believe they have sample pages all all on their website too. So um, you could also look there. Uh, it also comes with quite a few like things that you cut out. You have to do prep work for it. This is a mini book that I put together. I have a video on how I prep these science units. I'll link that down below for you as well. Um, so this is how I do it. However, they are updating their science units to be in a different format, whereas like how mine are, this is our, I guess our fourth year using them. Um, you have to print out your like student workbook pages and things like that and um, you have to like assemble things they now have like a student workbook that you buy from their website so that i think they have a bound because all of these pages come loose in your teacher's manual and now they're bound together like the history book was bound and then they also have a student workbook that's bound and it has like all the student pages printed out and ready to go so starting next year i'll probably be buying um units science units that have been prepared in that way so i'll be able to see how they're different but so far i have all the ones th that are like this okay so we're doing ecosystems first and then i don't really have an order for these yet um, but we're also going to be doing birds water in our world and energy so we'll figure out the order of those a little later but those are our four units that we're going to be studying this year well my baby just woke up from not a long enough nap and she's been extra cranky today so we'll see how the rest of this filming goes anyhow we're moving along to my first grade son he is using logic of english for his language arts and i have used logic of english uh their foundations 
um, what is it called? Their foundations series, I guess. Uh, it's four books, A, A, B, C, D. I have used it for all three of my older girls. Um, and so this is what the school, the charter school switched to a few years ago. And I really, really, really like the program and I'm happy with it. And so I'm happy to continue using it with my son and eventually with our last child as well when it comes to it. So he is on book, well, he will be on book C. He did levels A and B last year. Um, and so with the charter school, what they have us do is do this review um, with the kids for the first, it's like six weeks or so, um, reviewing books A and B. I don't think this is something that you can buy on their website, though. We did it with my girls uh, when I went through it with them. And I think it is only available because it says down here in development proof. So I, I don't know that you can buy this, but it quickly goes through kind of the fundamentals and reviewing a lot of the things taught in those two books. So we are working our way through this. And then once we finish that, um, I will have him as a little extra thing work on his handwriting because that can always improve. But we're doing handwriting um, for all the letters of the alphabet as well as other phonograms uh, in there. So I'm going to start this afterwards because it'll be a good review of everything that was taught in there as far as handwriting goes. So that will be something he does. And then this is the actual uh, level C and it comes with teacher man manual, student workbook, which has color and it's fun with activities. I have done a flip through of books A and B. I have not done books C and D yet. I will try to do book C this year and book D next year when I have that. Um, so don't hold me to it, but I will try <laughs> to show you that. So it comes with that. It comes with this thing called Knitting Nights books. A and B also had their own versions of this, and it's just a fun way of reinforcing different phonograms, the sounds they make, and then um, used in actual words. And if they make more than one sound, they'll include words like this with, so it matches that sound is being made right there. That sound is being made right there. You guys get the picture right there, there. So it's a good way to kind of put it into practice right away after you've learned the new phonogram. So it comes with that. And then it comes with these readers and there's like, I want to say the like eight or nine, there's eight of them, uh, all on different topics and reinforcing the phonograms that you learned um, so far. So they're only using words that have phonograms that have been learned. Um, up to that point. And then they also have these storybooks, more like chapter books, Miles and Jack's and Miles and Jack's Master Planners. Um, so these are more like very small chapter books. So that comes with it. And then in addition to it, they do in the teacher's manual tell you at times when you could be reading Bob books that would coincide with it. So if you wanted a little extra reading, so the school gives us these to borrow while we're doing it. And then they also give us these little readers, Snack Attack and Playful Pals, and then Clever Critters. And so these also kind of line up and our school kind of gives us a little cheat sheet as to when to use those. I think they do in correlation with that. But regardless, they're just really good little readers to get your child reading more. So this is what my first grade son is using. I'm going to skip over my third grader for a minute. And there's a reason for it. I'm going to bring you to my seventh and my fifth grader. Um, they are doing, they've been doing the same level, blah, they have been doing the same level of language arts for like, ever since we switched over to logic of English a number of years ago. Um, it was just what was needed. So you'll notice that we are not using logic of English, even though they do have another level or not another level, another series after the foundation series, they have one called essentials. Last year, we did start with the essentials series. Um, we got halfway through it and we were halfway through our school year and just decided that it was not a good fit for us anymore. It was just so much different 
than the foundation series and how things were presented and uh, how it maintained a level of interest for both the student and the teacher. And just, there's just a number of things. It felt like we were definitely going backwards a lot in a lot of ways, repeating a lot of the stuff that we'd already learned in foundations. But at the same time, I didn't feel like we could skip ahead. They do have three levels in the essentials series that you teach from the same book. So you could have three different levels going on at the same time. You, um, just at different sections in the lesson, you would teach from the A level or the B level or the C level, um, different things. And we were going through the B level. Um, and it just, yeah, it was just a really big struggle to get through it. So we talked with our teacher at the school and she, I asked her, what were people transitioning to after using Logic of English? And she actually told me, since we were already using the Good and the Beautiful for History and Science, that a lot of her families were also using that for language arts. So I was like, okay, I was actually looking into that. So we decided to switch and it has been a good switch for us. So that is now what we are using. And this is why I'm showing you this because these are my two, instead of going to my third grade daughter first, um, my at the time sixth and fourth graders uh, were going through the essential book together and we switched halfway through the year. So we are actually halfway through or a little more um, through level three and I chose level three instead of doing a higher level because I don't if you've switched curriculums mid-year before or even just switched to be starting the next year sometimes you have to go back a little bit to um, kind of even up the knowledge between the different curriculums if that makes sense so there were things in these books that I knew that they were already going to know and know well um, but there were also things that they hadn't been taught in the other curriculum. So I knew we needed to cover our bases. So that's why we went with level three. So halfway through this year, we'll be switching to course four um, or level four. And uh, it's been nice because there's more chance chances for independent work that the kids have in a lesson. And so it will have a section where you do it with the teacher or the parent and then they will have a section that has independent practice so that's been nice because while the kids are doing independent practice i can be working with another student on their lesson so um it's been a good switch for us um and it has a good variety of things every day it's more like how logic of english foundations was as far as like the variety of things in each lesson so that's been really nice to uh have something more similar to that i am however very very grateful uh that we did go through logic of english first because there are ways they present like spelling rules and things like that in here that we already learned previously and i actually like how the other curriculum presents the spelling rules a little bit more in that um, and so we continue to say the spelling words, spelling rules, how we originally learned them instead of how they're presenting it here. I just got interrupted, so I'm not sure exactly where I was other than I like how spelling rules were taught in the other book. Um, something I do not like about these books is the binding is really, really bad. I, the pages, especially like, um, this daughter's the pages we have like I had to paper clip on the cover there but she has like this is page 78 and this is the very beginning like what's paper clipped we have lost so many pages or they just have fallen out so easily I don't know why I wish they would do a different binding because I really it's really annoying um but so that's one thing I don't like uh with it comes a poetry book uh so Oftentimes at the beginning of a lesson, they will read two pages of poetry. The next day they'll repeat that poetry and then move on to the next set. Um, so there's that. And then they have this personal reader and they will be told when to read out of here every, you know, which lessons. And then sometimes they'll have a question um, that they have to answer in their independent section of the lesson. They also are told to read for 20 minutes independently every day, you know, from a good quality book. So this is what they're working on this year. I forgot to say, I believe this is the, actually, I can't remember. I can't remember if this is the newer version of these levels that they're putting out right now or not. I cannot remember. So don't hold me to that. 
I did want to mention that their favorite like thing to do in here are what these they're called uh, we call them mountain climbs but you have this mountain of some sort with all these words and they have to practice them and until they can master them and say them like a couple times through without like tripping over the words and stuff that's when they've mastered it they get to draw something at the top to show that they've mastered it and this is actually something that they do enjoy doing is getting to master one of those mountains lastly for my daughter in third grade she is now moved over to also the good and the beautiful language arts she's doing level two um she can get through this fairly easily so she last year finished uh level four of logic of english foundation series um so i moved her into this i didn't think she was quite ready for level three i thought this would be a good transition she maybe have been okay starting with level three but it's okay this has is going to be updated or has been updated i bought this while it was like on clearance because they were getting rid of this version and they're coming out with an updated version of it so um i'm interested to see how it changes because my son my son in a couple years will be going through this and it'll be the updated version so it comes with a very similar the only thing that's different between the two levels mostly is that there's maybe a little bit more teacher involvement and a little less independent work uh so uh that's as it gets leveled up there's tends to be more independent work and less teacher involvement is kind of how they handle that and then it also came with a personal reader and a shared reader so far she's only read out of the personal reader and we haven't done the shared reader yet but it tells you when to do all that as well now on to math we have been using math mammoth for a number of years now still really like it don't see myself changing it for any of my kids uh, so my first grade son he is actually, um, I don't have their current books with me. This is what the next book is. So each of, this is called the Light Blue series, by the way. Each one comes with an A book and a B book. So I have their B books here mostly because um, I just didn't want to pull out all of their books from their school boxes. So he just started on grade two um, A. And so this is his B book. So he'll be doing that. He is ahead in math. My third grade daughter is also ahead in math. As you'll see, she's she's working on grade four and she's in third grade. Um, it's just, I we push them. I And if I had switched earlier from Matthew C to Math Mammoth, and if you're interested into why we switched, I have a video on that. I can link that below as well. Um, if we had switched earlier and if the motivation had been there, my other daughters could have been pushed harder to get through things as well. So now he's doing grade two. My third grade daughter is doing grade four. My fifth grader is doing grade five. Um, and then my seventh grader is in grade seven. Um, and this is pre-algebra. Um, currently, they do not have a grade eight. However, I just went on their website because she does have recommendations. The youngest they have is for grade one, but she has recommendations on books that you can use for kindergarten, um, which I've used. And then she also tries to help you with like high school math, like recommendations on what she would you know move into. But she said in there, hopefully for the next school year, 2023 to 2024, she will have a grade eight uh, workbook out. Uh, that goes in this series. So fingers crossed, because that would really be useful if um, she has that come out then. So otherwise, we are at the end of this light blue series, which is kind of sad for me, because now I have to do research on where to go next. But like I said, hopefully that other one will come out in time. With these books, you can also purchase separately um, tests and cumulative reviews, um, which we do use the tests. I've used the reviews a little bit, um, but not not consistently at all. And then they also have an answer key, which I highly recommend for the older levels. I mean, I'm fairly good in math myself, and my kids are fairly good in math themselves. But there are times when I am stumped, and they are stumped. And just looking at the answer can help me figure out, oh, this is how it was supposed to go. And then I can explain it better to the kids. Because this is a much more independent um, program, if you will, uh, it teaches you what you need to do on the page, and then you do work right afterwards for it. 
And so um, they give you examples, they give you ex explanations, and then you just go right into it. So it's definitely a more independent uh, math than other types. I don't know if there's videos online for them. We've never used them if there are. Um, I do also recommend buying them in the color versions. We've done the black and white, but the color just really helps to break up the text and the problems on the page. It's not like an overabundance of color. It's not crazy, but it just adds enough that it helps. It helps at least my eyes to see things a little bit better. So I, I do recommend that if you go with this. Lastly, for those extras, um, as I'm going to call them, that we kind of pushed to the wayside while life was just really, really busy. Um, so we have been working through <laughs> this book. If you've seen my videos from years ago, you'll know we started in this book and we took a big break from it uh, just because of life. And then we're finally getting back into it, but it's different now. Instead of me being the one doing this with them. It's actually my husband and he does this with them on Sunday mornings um, as kind of like their Sunday school. Uh, so he's been the one going through this with them and it's been really nice uh, having him take over this, this part of their um, teaching and just really be able to do this with them. Um, so that's how we're getting that in. And then another thing that we need to get back and doing is typing. So we do have the Good and the Beautiful's Typing 1. They're 2 and they're 3, but no one has completed 1 yet. So this is something that I want to get back into doing. Um, it's just very simple. You just open up a Word document. Um, they teach you things on the pages. And then you just type. The lessons are short and sweet. And you just type there on that Word document. There's no like program you have to download or anything like that that. Um, no timer, no gimmicky anything, which like some of my kids just really don't do well with the time stuff and the gimmicks. And it's just it's more overwhelming than helpful. helpful. So this is kind of nice. It simplifies it down. So there's this. And then the last like extra thing that we're going to try to incorporate this year is also learning a second language. Um, last year, uh, we had some family that who are missionaries down in Brazil come visit. And so that was a really fun time. They speak um, fluently uh, Brazilian Portuguese, which one of my daughters specifically really, really, really liked hearing. And so she is now motivated to learn how to speak Portuguese so that she can speak with her cousins in Portuguese. So we found um, a free program online. I'll, I'll put it up here if I haven't already that uh, she's been using. She started last year, but hasn't gotten back into it. So we're going to get back into that. And um, another one of my daughters also is interested in Portuguese. And then I'm going to get my third daughter hopefully interested in something as well. And it's just short, like 10 minutes a day is all you have to do. So that's the other thing that I wanted to try to get um, incorporated into our daily schedule. Okay, that's everything. Um, hopefully I wasn't too long winded for you, but I can be so it just is what it is. Uh, yeah. Uh, if you want to see any of my other videos on homeschooling, I'll put a link down below to I have a playlist of all my homeschool related videos as well as like past curriculum choices videos. So I'll put links to those down below. Uh, if you have any questions on anything, feel free to leave a comment down below. I will get back to you as soon as I'm able to. And otherwise, I hope you're doing well and I'll see you later. Bye.